right, everybody, welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now today, we are looking for a very special species of snake. And what we're looking for today is the copperhead. Now this is a species of snake that lots of people think they see, only a few people actually see, and a lot of people think are super, super dangerous and deadly. Now what's really cool about these snakes is that they're actually quick to flee or quick to sit still and rely on their camouflage to save themselves. So hopefully we run into one, and I want to show you just how cool and just how mellow they can be. Let's take a look. All right, so we've just walked up on a nice little kind of cave area. So we're going to check down here. Um, a lot of times snakes will kind of sit in these areas because they can um, sit up against a rock face and kind of ambush prey as it walks by. So we're going to take a look down here, and hopefully we run into what we're looking for. All right. <sighs> Let's take a look here, shall we? So right off the bat, I noticed something very interesting and peculiar. Right down here is uh, an itchy ball of opilions, or daddy long legs. Oh, it's just like the ASMR of their tiny little legs trickling over the rock face. Oh, how glorious. Now, apilions, a lot of people don't realize, are not actually spiders. See, if I can grab one here. Oh, actually. So, as you can see, they only have a single segment. Um, on on uh, spiders, they will have a cephalothorax and then an abdomen following. Uh, but the apilions, uh, even though they do have eight legs, making them arachnids, um, only have one segment. Very, very interesting. All right, not what we're here to find. I probably have a bunch crawling all over me now. Let's try and find some snakes. Ugh. All right, my fellow American, we are going. Thank you, sir. Now you can see right here, beautiful, beautiful little small cave system, lots of little erosion holes and things like that. So this is gonna be a good place for lots of birds, lots of um, small mammals uh, to hide and potentially become prey items for the snakes we're looking for. Um, oh, actually, you see that right there? Right there, gorgeous, broad-banded copperhead. See how it's following the line of this wall? It's exactly how they move. Ambush for prey. Let me see if I can move some of this. Some of these plants out of the way. Where'd you go, buddy? Where'd you go? I want to be careful that he doesn't get away from me so I can show you guys. Oh man, look at those colors. Those are amazing. Look at this snake. Look at that. Wow, look at that snake. All right, we're going to try and move it um, into an area that'll be a little easier to film. This is very shrubby. But yeah, take a look at that snake. That's such a gorgeous snake. Very, very pretty. Very gorgeous. <laughs> I'm saying gorgeous too much. Um, but beautiful, beautiful snakes. Very, very common species of terrestrial pit viper we have in North America. So we're hopefully going to get this guy moved over here. Get some filming. All right. So you can keep filming this. All right. Come here, buddy. I know. Just kind of coax him out this way. That's right. This is your idea to go this way. Your idea. Oh man, such a gorgeous cover. This is one of the nicer ones I've seen. Actually, come and take a look at what he's doing here. See how he's pulled the coils of his body up kind of over his head. He's hoping that I'll go for these for this tail as opposed to that beautiful head. Look at that. And you see that tail. He wants me to go for that instead of that head. Beautiful, beautiful head. Really gorgeous. You can see how that tail is a little grayish green on the end. When these are babies, they have a bright yellow greenish tail that they actually use to attract prey. So they wiggle that little tail around. Wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it around and try and attract, attract a lizard or frog. It's one of the favorite prey items of these beautiful snakes, lizards, frogs, and they'll even eat insects like cicadas. So let's try and get this guy a little farther over. Oh, you're okay, you're okay. I don't want to stress him out too much because he doesn't need all that. Oh yeah, clear up that nice space. You're okay, buddy. Look 
at this snake. That is a good looking copperhead. Wow, look at that snake. Really, really nice looking. Wow. Hi, you're so cute. Now, these snakes are hemotoxic. So what that means is that their venom attacks blood cells and tissue cells. Um, so a lot of times when bitten, you experience some pretty serious swelling, possible uh, tissue damage. Um, but really, bites from these guys are not life-threatening. Um, it takes a good amount of uh, copperhead venom to actually kill an adult human being. Um, and most large adult copperheads don't even possess that much. And then on top of that, they, uh, they will often dry bite or only inject a small amount of venom. Uh, again, non-lethally. Um, what is that? That is something big, a big beetle or something. Anyway, um, so really, even though the bite would really, really hurt. Oh, you're about to slip off this hook, aren't you? Yeah. Um, it's not going to be a very life-threatening situation. So, hi. You're so cute. You're so cute. On top of being super, super cute and awesome, copperheads are a medium-sized snake, uh, really only reaching about three, three and a half feet at adult size. Now, as you see, this snake is not coming towards me. In fact, it's going away from me. Again, a very non-confrontational nature. Now, snakes, again, can strike about two-thirds, um, at most, um, their length um, away from themselves. So that was a little confusing. They can strike about two-thirds of their body length. <laughs> um, but these guys are super, super docile uh, for the most part. You can see it's totally calm, not really interested in uh, attacking me or doing much of anything to me. And you see that tongue flicking, the beautiful pink tongue. Such a good-looking snake. I know you're so sweet. You're so sweet. Give me a kiss. Just kidding. I won't kiss him this time. Really, really nice snakes. Look at that. Now, the genus of these snakes is Agkistrodon, uh, which they actually get this name from their close cousin, the cottonmouth. Um, Agkistrodon is essentially a combination of Greek words um, that essentially come together to create the meaning fish hook tooth. And that refers to the fish eating nature of the cottonmouth, which is a semi aquatic cousin of these beautiful copper heads. Now, Achistrodon is one of my favorite genera of venomous snakes. Um, I'm a little partial to them because I'm able to find them in my home state of Texas. Um, we're able to find this one here just south of San Antonio. And these are really, really nice snakes, and it's always a pleasure to find one. As you can see, no interest in defending itself because it does not feel threatened. Does not feel threatened. <laughs> does it not feel threatened? Does feel threatened? No does not feel threatened. Really, really nice snakes. Small juvenile, again, about half grown. If it was a male, maybe a third grown if it was a female. You're so cute. I know. <gasps> oh, he's chasing me! Oh, I scared him. Alright, well, we've had our fun with this guy. I don't want to stress him out too much. So we're going to let it go on its way. And, um, oh, I know. Hopefully we find some other cool species this trip. Bye, I love you. Hey. Hey. Um, you want any pictures or anything with it? Yeah. Okay. Ah! Uh, he's, <laughs> he's chasing me. Oh no, he's gonna eat you. Alright, so we're gonna let this lovely little creature back into the wild where it belongs. Whoa, whoa. Okay, honey, you can go. Thank you for cooperating. You're so cute. All right. See how they just blend so perfectly into that leaf litter. And there she goes, back on her way, hopefully to find some frogs or lizards or something to eat later today. Look at that slow crawl. There you go. Right on the, under those logs. All right, cool stuff, folks. Stay tuned and subscribe, please. Just subscribe. So much of you watch the videos without subscribing. I don't know why you would, 
Because if you subscribe, you get to see all of them. If you don't subscribe, you only get to see like a few. And wouldn't you rather see all of them? Because some of them are not good. And you might miss some of the good ones. Just kidding. I think they're all, you know, decently solid. I'm working on it. So just consider, please. For the sake of me, for the sake of you, for the sake of your family, consider subscribing. All right. Love you. Bye. Uh, oh, oh, oh.